the Thoughty OT podcast. I think you'd ask me about why autistic people might be drawn to philosophy. I'm just curious. Yeah, okay. yeah, 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 sure. Because um, I, th- I think when we when we were chatting, I mean, you know, I mean, f- for me, I think there there are kind of these. I think we we came up with like three different separate things, like mm-hmm. the rituals around it. Oh yes, uh-huh. you know, having the routine, the rituals, certainty and framework. Yes. You know, going through life. It's very important for us to understand things and the things that are not so easily definable and certain like social interaction (laughs) understanding people and emotions tend to be a bit harder for us and then you know last day i think we were saying about like the interest or like the special interests of understanding like the complexity of life and stuff so which which one would you want to talk on maybe let's see the first was rituals the second was certainty and framework the framework is interesting to me too. Mm-hmm. And then what was the third again? The interest in the complexity of life. Yeah, the last two, I guess. Yeah. Last two. Go for it. Oh, <laughs> for me first. Okay. Hmm. Well, I mean, I guess I could just speak to me personally. And and my brother is also on the spectrum. I think my my father might have been as well. Got those genetic yeah. genetic ties. <laughs> yeah, I asked him actually. My brother and I both asked him. We were like, "Would you ever go get tested?" And he just smiled at me and he was like, "No." <laughs> like, okay. I'm still working on it with my dad. He's kind of right. he's open with it at this point, but um, that's great. He, he's not he's not got any like drive to go get a diagnosis. He's you know he's in his fifties and he feels quite stable in his life. He doesn't really have any issues, so it's understandable, I guess. That makes sense. Just one thing I will say that connects with, I guess, personally, my brother and I both have a ability or a way to see or to form patterns and connections between things that maybe mm. other people might not see an inherent pattern. I in. relate. Mm. You relate to that? Cool. Yeah, it's the whole pattern pattern recognition stuff around autism. It's, it's very... Um, very interesting. So that lateral thinking, I think. Okay. okay. Some people define it as like thinking laterally between different concepts and things and making connections and all that. Interesting. There's a lot uh, that I'll have to ask you for references because I'm certainly interested in reading and learning more about it. Mm-hmm. I think that and then also just making sense of the world as much as we can, having my own dedicated personal philosophy or ethos. I mean, Mm -hmm. I think Thomas Jefferson did this. It was Thomas Jefferson, or maybe it was, I forget who it was, but I've thought, I think he rewrote the Bible and took out all the magical bits (laughs) or the New, New Testament or something. Yeah, right, to apply just the basic moral ethics the J- J- D- judeo christian values and i guess i seek to do the same in my own way to take different truths that i've learned from different belief systems and my own experiences and things like that and kind of put together my own format for mm. what it means to live a good life be a good person make an impact in the world that kind of thing and oh wow yeah i think maybe i'm forgetting <laughs> sorry i think i have it's to okay. have it in it's, front it's fine. of it's... me oh here we go yeah the complexity of life mm. yeah so that i guess i just answered my own question on the on the second one about certainty and framework is like i want to have my own framework that's in individual and that goes back to being an existentialist is that I'm personally responsible for my own views too. And so it's like making it my own as a creative person, creating my own ethos or my own doctrine, so to speak, in a way, or philosophical views taking from different people that I've been influenced by over the years. 
And I just want to mention like Eric Fromm, his reflections on love. I really recommend his book, The Art of Loving. If you get a chance to read it, it's great. I think he's an atheist and a socialist. Michael Foucault, uh, Michel Foucault, his dissection of power structures has been influential in my life. Henry David Thoreau and J.S. Mill on personal freedom and liberty. And then transcendentalists like Walt Whitman, the inherent goodness of the individual, the wonder of nature. And that's had a profound impact on my views on the natural world and I guess our relationship to it as humans. And then William Blake, his poetry, his uh, exploration of themes like innocence or good and evil, humans' relationship with the divine. And lastly, uh, Hildegard of Bingen. She was like a Christian mystic, but she was also Mm -hmm. a poet, a healer. What else did she do? Composer, philosopher, mystic, visionary, medical writer, and practitioner during the Middle Ages. So, wow. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, that was a lot of info dumping, but I guess no, no, no. It's 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 interesting, isn't it? Because it, when you go back in kind of history and time and stuff, it's the the lines between science and religion and spirituality, and like you know things like things like alchemy and stuff are very like one in the same to a certain extent. Yes, like it's. Uh, it's it's interesting like yeah mm-hmm. i mean that would be my life's think, work oh, sorry yeah yeah i think philo- philosophy for me is is definitely it definitely came out of my my experiences you know as you said trying to trying to understand the world why why things were happening to me and other people that that weren't good you know, going into in, into philosophy, or or at least just thinking about life in, in solitary on my own, it was important for me because, you know, I I felt very much like I was, you know, out in the water. Like I didn't really feel like there was any rhyme or reason to anything, and it was very very difficult to, I guess, withstand the negatives that were happening in my life without having some kind of guided understanding of things or certainty around certain things. So that's, that's definitely why I, I guess, gravitate towards philosophy. I don't have any particular rituals that I do. I know that, you know, that the whole idea of autism and routine, some, sometimes having rituals allows you to have a set time in the day to I guess think or feel or, or do a certain thing which is positive for your for your mental health. I'm just thinking about it now. I I think I probably do have some rituals that I do, which are not like I had something in my head which is just completely flown away. Do you have any nighttime but, um, rituals or anything or morning rituals? I think, particularly when it, when I'm struggling with something that is to do with experience like um my recent kind of breakup with my my long-term partner was obviously quite quite impactful um to a certain extent you know for for me my 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 rituals come in like where where i put my emotional energy like when and where like i give myself time to think about certain things. So, you know, I set a time, particular times in in the day or sometimes when I'm going through a lot of emotional turmoil where I'm sort of dividing my, my, my thoughts or my, or my feelings, you know, you, you, the, the idea of processing things and processing events and emotions and stuff is very important and it's something that you, you kind of need to do. But at the same time, processing all of it all the time throughout the day all the time is is equally not good for 
maintaining your life and your productivity and you know actually living <laughs> not right. just just living in negative feelings um and so for me setting time aside where i i'm allowing myself to to think and feel about that that stuff and then closing off that for the for the rest of the day or something it's 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 important for me and you know that that kind of drills on the idea of alexithymia because for me emotions are not easily recognized or identified it used to be a lot worse nowadays it's a bit easier um but actually leaning into possible feelings or thoughts that i have um helps me be aware of what i'm feeling and and c- helps me kind of connect my feelings to certain events or thoughts which i f- i find very very helpful you know i might play some emotional music which is related to it and good you know i think i think that's that that could probably be some some level of a ritual i guess with with things and it's been very helpful for me sounds like it sounds like a good ritual <laughs> And I say in, in terms of philosophy or philosopher, you know, I think um, the idea of positive nihilism resonates with me probably the most out of anything I do very much like all the existential stuff. And, you know, obviously Friedrich Nietzsche, the father of nihilism, is quite a, a big impact on me. Um, I've read a few books. I'm very I'm very bad with names and people and describing what people have done and what people have said to to their names. Uh, but I have read a few books, and there was one called like the Existentialist Cafe, which was quite interesting for me. Awesome. Um, it's kind of getting all of these philosophers together and having them discuss things, and yeah, it was it was really 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 interesting. 